Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. Today I'll not be solving any daily lead code problem with you. Rather, this brings me to the third episode of Low Level System Design course, and we'll be talking about solid principles. I hope you have already gone through the first two videos, the single responsibility one, and today we'll talk about open closed principle, which forms a strong foundation of each and every low level system design problem. So without further ado, put your hands together for your host, none other than Sanchit Dudeja, working at SD4 at Adobe. And I hope you're gonna thoroughly enjoy today's session. I promise you will definitely learn something new today. If system design is something that haunts you every night, then you have come to the right place. Because with this course, system design will become your strength. And to be specific, this course talks about low level system design. I'll be coming up with the high level system design as well very soon. So without further ado, let's move on to the presentation that I usually do and let's get started. So as a regular process, we'll first try and draw inferences of a real life problem and how it actually maps to open close principle. And then we will try to draw inferences out of it, how it is actually solved in real world. Even before we jump on to a real life example, let's try and understand the definition of open closed principle. How can anything be closed and open at the same time? Got confused, right? However, the attributes associated with being open and being closed are different. It means that your design should be open to extension. So whenever new added new requirements are generated in your system, those should be added as new functionalities. The old functionalities should remain intact. Similarly, for the closed part, it means that your design should be closed for modification. Once you have developed one class, you should never modify it. Let's take a real life example and let's try to understand their meanings. Have you ever seen the blueprint architecture of any building? It looks something like this from the outside. So let's assume this is a blueprint architecture of an apartment and each floor has it designated positions where would be the dining area, where would be the kitchen, where would be the laundry area, where would be the bathroom area. And internally, all the floors can be modified in terms of building these independent units. However, you cannot change where the bathroom lies or where the kitchen or laundry lies. So let's assume for a second that this requirement was not well defined over here. So whenever a new buyer came and bought the house, he or she can modify it as per the requirement. So let's consider a hypothetical scenario where I went ahead and bought a house and then I, as per my terms and conditions, built kitchen in the left wing, built drawing room in the right wing, built laundry in the central area somewhere. So let's assume I was interested in building kitchen where I am highlighting uh, the first floor of my house. Now the shaft for the water supply would go somewhere from here because kitchen is associated at this position. Now let's assume the second floor got occupied by another buyer and he or she tried building the kitchen over somewhere here. So the shaft for water would, would go somewhere in this direction. Let's assume the fourth floor got occupied and again someone tried building kitchen in this position at this particular location. The shaft for water supply would go somewhere over here. Now let's further assume that this floor got occupied and again the kitchen is built somewhere over here. The shaft for water supply would go in this direction. So can you see the haphazard direction for the water shaft that is getting built in the system? Do you think is it extendable in nature? No, it's not extendable in nature. Let's hypothetically assume that few years later, someone came at the third floor and wants to build the shaft somewhere over here, wants to build the kitchen somewhere over here. Then the entire pipe has to be modified so that the water shaft could go first from over here, then here and so on. You yourself see it's such a mess. There is no well-defined contract 
in this particular case where the owners can design the interiors by themselves where they have the liberty to decide the position for their kitchen decide the position for their bathroom living room and laundry area however with this case it becomes a total mess for the society management to even sustain this in long run as you can see you never know when the design for the entire building has to be modified this is not feasible in real world that is the reason whenever any building is erected its design is finalized the prototype of the design has to be followed by all the owners of each floor it can't be modified that means there is the compliance to, to which the owner should abide to and this is what the blueprint of an apartment is called you are free to design and modify the interior areas but you can't change the main core structures of your house the position for your kitchen area laundry area bathroom gets fixed as soon as you buy the house you don't have the liberty to modify it up if we go by the first approach where the owners of the house had the liberty to design the interiors by themselves then you will see it was not feasible to maintain in long run there was no extendability that this methodology provides so these are the two biggest problems that we saw with that approach and we rectified it by defining the blueprint of the apartment so we will draw inferences from this example and we will see how it actually maps to open close principle so here i have created a project named open close principle and i have created two packages under it the first one is a compliant version the next one is a non compliant version and in order to understand the compliant version fully we should first have a look at the non compliant version let's hypothetically assume a new developer just out of college was given the responsibility to build a micro services that basically tells all the statistics corresponding to a particular shape for example the shapes could be a circle it could be a rectangle and it could be a square so what he did he created an interface shape and then he created three classes the first one is a circle it implements shape and it has radius attribute in it similarly rectangle has two attributes in it length and breadth and it again implements shape the third one is the square it has an attribute named side and it also implements shape now he created the main class which is nothing but find shape stats it basically is responsible for generating all the statistical parameters corresponding to any shape so what will it have it will have a shape object with it and we should also define getter setter along with it so as a basic principle it also contains a get area method and another one is get parameter one and what he has written under it if my shape is an instance of a circle then he applied pi r square formula if that shape is an instance of square then he applied side square formula if that shape is an instance of rectangle then he applied length into breadth formula and in case the shape is not any of this instance then he simply returned null similarly you can yourself define the parameter helper method but do you see any flaw with this approach whenever any new shape is to be added get shape method has to be rectified as more and more shapes gets added into your system all the public methods get area get parameter and what not has to be updated in order to support the new formulas for that particular shape which is not a very good design how can we improvise this up let's have a look at the compliant version you yourself can see can see that this method will become a mess and all the control will lie over here rather than it should be the responsibility of each and every inheriting class to define the shape method what i am trying to say let's have a look at it so we have created an interface named shape and under that we have provided a contract that whosoever is implementing this shape interface should implement get area method and along with that it should also implement get parameter method let's have a look at all those classes that are implementing this shape class the first one is circle 
so circle has an attribute radius onto it and it also provides has overridden the get area method and get parameter method so the get area is pi r square and get parameter is 2 pi r the rectangle class is implementing again the shape interface and it has two attributes in it the length and the breadth the get area method is also overridden so does the get parameter get parameter method as per the formula length into breadth and 2 into length plus breadth similarly we have created a third one as square and uh, we have overridden get area and get parameter method so what lies in the shape find shape starts is the minimal code in the get area method we have simply invoked shape dot get area and it is a responsibility or of all those who are implementing this shape interface to appropriately provide the get area method so does the parameter get parameter method over here so there will be no instances checks in any of these methods and everything will be done as per the contract that is specified in the shape interface let's travel back to the definition of open close principle and see whether we followed the compliance appropriately or not as per the principle it should be closed for modification once you develop a class you should never modify it so if we follow this approach then find shape method will never be modified whatsoever may be the case how many more shapes will be added there should be never the necessity to modify any of the methods under find shape stats that means our algorithm is closed for modification however if we go by this approach then every time a new shape is added get area has to be updated get parameter has to be updated that simply signifies that this strategy is not following open close principle now let's discuss the second attribute of open close principle which is open to extension whenever new requirements are generated new functionality can be added that simply means that whenever a new shape is added into our system it can be incorporated in the same methodology of find shape stats if you go by this approach then it falls under this category and it simply means that our algorithm is open for extension I hope I made sense to you guys and I'm able to convey the principle appropriately. Along with this, you should remember the advantages of open close principle. Your algorithm becomes more flexible in nature. It is easier to maintain and you can simply extend it for future versions. However, if you don't follow this methodology, then the maintainability aspect will not exist in your system, which we saw in this particular case. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, then please guys do subscribe to Coding Decoded if you want to see more videos in future. And I promise together we will master low level system design. I am submitting this entire open close principle in GitHub repo of Coding Decoded. So if you want to refer it up in future, do check it out over there. Link is in the description. Now it's time to say goodbye. I'll see you very soon with another episode of low level system design and we will be talking about LISCO substitution principle. But till then, take care, have a great day ahead and I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question on daily lead code challenge. Bye bye.